Good morning. Good morning. There are good things about it. You got to find them. My name is Dwight Fish, and I'm a member of the Board of Trustees of this congregation. Welcome to you all. The Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Elkhart is a welcoming community, encouraging religious freedom, nurturing individual spirituality, and ethical growth, celebrating diversity, and promoting a just and sustainable world. Speaking of that, we have a recycling bin right outside for your programs. You can pop them in and we'll recycle the paper. Trying to do our parts. If you would like to learn more about this fellowship, please look at our website at uufe.org and join us after the service for our coffee hour. For the listening enjoyment of all, we ask you at this time to please turn off all your cell phones and pagers. Also, if you need hearing support, please ask for help at the uh, sound desk back here um, and engage us more as individuals, as new members, 
talk to our board members and uh, other members, non-board members, to uh, learn more about UUF. Hey, Kyle! Thank you. Kyle! Come here, you wanna see your dad? Well, in a few minutes, I guess. For Good morning, the everyone. Good morning. Welcome. Three, four I am Linda Becker, and in Judy Darnell's absence, I'm going to be sharing our announcements pizza and our there. updates. Pizza. Uh, first off, Science and Society is resuming their monthly <laughs> meetings on this Tuesday, January 10th, and on the 24th, the program, which is narrated by President Barack Obama, is about the national parks of the world. I have, uh, I, I have not been to another world national park that I know of. This month, uh, today, and on January 22nd, our meditation group will be meeting at 1145 in the CUPS meeting room. There will be no meeting on January 15th. They're going to skip a week. It's potluck, yes. Uh, with the new year, we welcome back our yoga teacher, Kristen Smith Myers. Yoga meets every Thursday evening at 6 p.m. in the gathering place, and everyone's welcome. Next Sunday, January 15th, is a busy one. Um, our speaker is Susie Holza, um, who will speak about the spiritual value of food. And there's going to be a workshop workshop the day prior, um, but the service will then be followed by our monthly potluck, and then at noon we will have a special congregational meeting regarding proposed revision to our bylaws, and we hope to see everyone there here uh, next Sunday. Our UU feasters are ready to start off the new year with a get together. They'll be dining at the Brislow Bistro on. Wednesday, January 25th at 1130. Please RSVP with Mary Adams uh, if you plan to go and um, if you want to get back with her soon because she's leaving on, no, no, okay, but, oh, by email, okay, please. Today at four o'clock, there'll be a community euchre game and soup supper. Please see Mary Adams if you have any questions, everyone's invited. And I guess it's a really fun time, so. And a beginner's table, okay. It's fun, it's fun. Um, the next announcement is kind of funny. My computer did spell correct on me. And the reminder incorrectly stated that the next time you are grouchy shopping, <laughs> please remember our UUFE pantry. Gr grocery shopping works well also. <laughs> Uh, lastly, with the new year, another reminder that UUFE does have a very thoughtful care committee, care team available to counsel and support our members when needed. That's it. Thank you. Good morning. It's kind of good to be back together, isn't it? after all the storms and the agitation, whatever. Today's chalice lighting, the gong first. <laughs> we ring the gong three times, once for those who came before us and made a place for us, once for those of us who are here now, and once for those who will come after us and build on the dream. Now our chalice lighting. With full hearts, we affirm our relationship with one another. This pertains to today's gathering in particular. We recognize our agency and our connective power, and we accept our responsibility to be bold and courageous we light this chalice, which is a symbol of all that we are, all that we have done together, and all that will be as a shared ministry encourages those within and beyond our walls.
Each Sunday, we collect an offering that is shared with a nonprofit that aligns with our mission and values. Well, we're going to do it at the end. If you look on your uh, order of service, we're all going to do it at the end of the um, service today. Yeah, the membership. So, last week, we collected uh, for the sustainability fund, which is our own internal fund to help us defray large charges, TJ, <laughs> like we got today uh, for keeping our um, furnaces alive. Today, we share the offering with the Elkhart County Symphony Orchestra. Please, you're invited to give generously. Now we'll call for the offering. Here in this church, human beings have gathered seeking a higher purpose and deeper life than they could find alone. We are grateful today for each one of you and that you have found your way here and that you have decided to make a commitment to this faith community. We hope that as members of this church, you will allow yourselves to know and to be known, to minister and to be ministered unto, to love and to be loved by this congregation. This is something true for all of us, whether we're an actual member or a friend, an attendee, but this is something to keep in mind. This is not something just for our brand new members. If they would come up right now, um, we would like to see Ed, Lee, Mary is with us on Zoom, Taylor, Jenny, and Ray. If you want to stand up along here or yeah. You're okay. Or if you want to be yeah, beside yeah, you. Be Wherever it works. We're flexible. Okay, and we're gonna say this together. Okay. Today we welcome into our community these new members who have chosen to make a commitment to this congregation by signing our membership book. Ed, where's Ed? Over there. Yeah. Lee, Mary, hi Mary, <laughs> Taylor, Jenny, and Ray. We are so glad that you have chosen to be here with us in this community of fellow seekers to travel with you on your life journeys. Will you accept our gifts of fellowship, discovery, and service? Will you offer us your unique presence and gifts? Will you add your name to the long history of Unitarian Universalists who spread hope with our living faith? Will you engage with us as we seek to create a community and a world dedicated to love and justice? If so, answer, I will. I will. All right, Sherry. To the congregation, Congregation, will you welcome these new members with the warmth and comfort of your fellowship? Will you seek to add your strengths and talents to the new gifts they bring to us? Will you share our triumphs and our struggles as our community grows and changes? If so, say, we will. We will. Thank <laughs> you. 
<clears throat> Let us say together the covenant of our fellowship. Uh, I printed them out. And I, oh, here we go. <clears throat> I want to pass these out because you may not have all memorized the covenant yet. It's not a requirement. <laughs> Oh, you brought yours. Let us say together the covenant of our fellowship, the promise that we make each week to ourselves and to each other, which holds our community together with common purpose and common love in the midst of our beautiful diversity of belief. Love is the spirit of this church and service is its law to dwell together in peace to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. This is our covenant. And now, on behalf of the membership committee, I am happy to give each of the new members a gift bag, which contains a chalice pin and a copy of the Unitarian Universalist Pocket Guide. Lee, Mary, and Ed, you have already received your name badges. Taylor, Ray, and Jenny, Yours are attached to your gift bag. And finally, all of your names will be added to the list of members who receive the UU World magazine twice a year. Welcome to you all and your gift board. And Luke. And yes, Mary, yours will uh, probably be given to you when you come back. <laughs> okay. That ends our Would you please stand if you're willing and able and turn to hymn number 346. Come sing a song with me. Share a rose with me, 
Come share a rose with me that I might know your mind. And I'll bring you hope when hope is hard to find. And I'll bring a song of love and a rose in the winter time. Thank you. I just, <laughs> just, I just want you to know that's on me. I should have hit pause before I came up. You know, one of these days, we're going to get better when Carl and Terry, either of them, aren't here. But if you got me, <clears throat> it's almost as good as a, a joke that Reverend Jimmy would tell before he starts, right? Joke, joke, joke's on me. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about in gathering and belonging. The Collins English Dictionary defines in gathering as a harvest of farm products and also as a gathering together of people and assembly. In the Bible, in gathering is a term used in the book of Exodus to describe one of the great annual festivals of the Jews immediately after the harvest. In our UU faith, in gathering has historically been an event around Labor Day to kick off the new church year, perhaps with a water communion or other event. It is a time for reunion after the summer to recovenant together and reestablish connectedness. An important part of our in gathering today is to recognize and welcome people who have joined, who have signed the membership book and made a commitment to our fellowship. But whether you have signed the book or not, However, we celebrate your participation and choice to make UUFE a part of your life. Being a part of a spiritual community is an important part of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. This hierarchy in general applies to almost all of us. The foundation of Maslow's five needs, levels of needs are basic physiological and safety needs like food, water, and shelter followed by safety and security. Going beyond that are social and psychological needs, like love, friendship, affiliation, and belonging. And just beyond that are needs for esteem, dignity, and independence, leading to growth, fulfillment, exploration, creativity, and spirituality. Some species of primates express social and psychological needs, but it is the human species that so crucially covet connections, love, and a sense of belonging. We want to associate with and form connections with those having shared purpose and meaning. We need to explore and grow and create, and this develops better together and apart. Take a moment and think about one of those times when you didn't fit in time when you experienced exclusion or a sense of not belonging. For most of us, that doesn't feel very good. Now think about a time and consider what happens when you feel a strong sense of belonging. That's quite a difference, isn't it? We want to feel welcome to belong and to affiliate with those with a shared purpose, meaning, and values. There is power and strength in a group. Let me give an extreme example from my life. And I see a number of past presidents in this room who've been to leadership school, so I'm going to talk about that. I fondly remember my session at leadership, UU Leadership School in Decorah, Iowa. Over the course of a week, about 35 to 40 regional participants learned, shared, and worshiped together. You also became part of a smaller cohort group of seven to eight individuals. One of your cohort challenges was to develop and deliver a worship service, also coordinating parts with a small youth group. 
The first cohort, as I recall, had a day and a half advance notice. Surprise, you're gonna put on a worship service in a day and a half. No pressure. And I, I have to tell you, I was fortunate not to be in that first group. Your free time to work on this worship service was limited to those times in between class or after class. Each succeeding cohort group put on a worship service the following day. And I, I'm sure you can guess how those first worship services went, right? They were amazing. They were really good. It turns out that with few constraints and much creativity, it so happens when you put together people that are focused, committed and passionate about their purpose, they can do really wonderful things. And I'll add that good cafeteria is also a factor. Soft serve ice cream, anyway, at least at ours. Very quickly, we had a strong sense of togetherness and purpose within our cohort and within our entire program. Leadership school was amazing. In the end, we had to leave. Some of us were pretty teary and others pretended not to be. When we feel a strong sense of belonging, how does that enhance our identity? How does that contribute to what we can achieve? Part of my identity is that I'm a Unitarian Universalist. This means I believe in strength and diversity with unity, tolerance, and interdependence in search for purpose and meaning and recognizing that no one set of beliefs is right or has all the answers. I also believe that there's some form of universal continuation of our essence and our souls. Part of my identity is that I'm a member of our fellowship. We have wide ranging thoughts and ideas. This is not where I expect to find the answer. Rather, it is a place where I'll learn, search, and discover ideas and concepts which lead me to some answers. Until then, I'll try to live with care and concern for everyone and everything. And this community and fellowship helps keep me grounded and accountable. I hope you have a sense of purpose and belonging here, and this is your beloved spiritual community. I hope a key part of your identity is as a UU and a part of our fellowship. At this time, I would like to invite one at a time to come forward, Phil Campanoli, Taylor Chadwick, and Lee Burdorf. And we have Susie Meeks Wade in our program, but she's sick today. And I'd like each of them to individually share their thoughts on the topic of belonging. Phil? Check this out. Can we all oh, hear me? Okay. Thank you for being here. Thank you for a little bit of natural light, which I need and we all need. And Chuck asked me to comment on the word, the idea of belonging, I did so with some trepidation. As a psychology teacher, we spent quite a long time studying, debating, asking questions about language, communication, and oftentimes the misuse of language. The word we have before us is belonging. And if you look that up in most dictionaries, you'll find a couple of rather diverse definitions. Belonging and belong often get a little bit confused 
belonging has to do with a feeling and a behavior related to some others, a group, a group that is welcoming, that is supported, and oftentimes, as in this fellowship, loving. A word that sometimes is used is the word, though, belong. And that definition often means that you actually possess somebody or you are possessed by someone possessed because you are a thing possessed because you are a person all of us know enough about history realize that one of the worst parts of our history is the idea that human beings in our country were possessed for a long time and the remnants of that are still with us. One of the problems with words are they're tricky. They are tricky. They have both connotations and denotations. And people who want to manipulate or confuse us often will try to get us to focus on the connotation. The connotation is a group of ideas, feelings, thoughts that come along with a word. It's not the denotation definition and that's where we can get into a real mess so I'm going to try to explain to you what I want us to focus on at least from my point of view and that's the idea of belonging, belonging, in this case, to this fellowship. It's a tricky thing. Words change meaning depending on place. depending on who we're talking with, depending on time. If we are not on the same page in any one of those factors, the words are going to be difficult to discern. One time I looked up the word awful. It is linked with the word awesome. Weird. And that happens over and over again. So a word has or can have all kinds of tentacles going in different directions to or with different people. One thing that's so confusing is that a word is a symbol 
and symbols are not the things. Symbols represent things, but they are not things. If you study much semantics, you run across the phrase that the map is not the territory. You have all seen and used road maps, but don't drive on them. It's that way with many kinds of things. Um, I'll try to give you a simple example. Can you see what I'm holding? Have any of you ever eaten one of these? <laughs> I would bet each one of you a thousand dollars that you have not. Because what this means is that that's what it means to eat this symbol. And we really can get confused about that a lot. The need to belong goes back millions of years. The fish have schools. The birds have flocks. And we have communities. We social, we are social beings. And that's a prime reason you and I are here today. It's a prime reason why I belonged here and came here. I needed to feel like I was in a place where people accepted me and respected me. And as I said, sometimes loved me. It's a place where we can share, and we do share. In fact, just before the service, Jenny came by and showed me a photo of her first grandchild. And she may share that with you. A big part of belonging is sharing. The opposite of belonging is separation. It's been observed that the loss of vision separates us from things and the loss of hearing separates us from people. And chronic pain makes it more difficult to perceive and respond to well, almost everything. Between my hearing loss, an unwelcome companion of Lewy body dementia, and my chronic back pain, I am now more separate than I had ever been before in my life. So my world continues to get smaller. Even when I try to keep it large like it used to be, can't do that. 
I rely now more for connection to touch. It's one of the first senses that we have when we're born, and it's one of the last senses that we lose. Comfortable chair, and people here almost every Sunday provide me with a comfortable chair to sit in. Soft fabric. Sometimes you'll see me just touching my wife's coat because <laughs> it feels so good. I try to give as much as I can. Because without giving, there's not receiving. But if there's not receiving, my giving is of not. No consequence. But I know that I still belong here with you because I feel accepted and loved for whoever I am now or will become because I'm going to be different. I feel that what I am able to give is warmly accepted and has a real place here. And I have never stopped loving you, my beloved community. Thank you for being this community, being here now, being where I can be. Good morning. Good morning. I'm, I'm Taylor. <laughs> uh, I'm here to speak about belonging, what it means to me. Mine's going to be a little bit more personal because I came here uh, for myself. <laughs> and uh, basically, when I started coming here, I mean, I have to admit, I, I use you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because usually when I'm feeling down, and I don't really have a family that thinks the way that I do, and all I have to lean on is my family or, pardon my French, but cruddy boyfriends, you know, and they don't, they don't look at me the way that I would like to be looked at or understand me the way that I'd like to be understood. So I, was do, I did a lot of searching for a, a lot of my life, and I was, I've been in and out of the Unitarian Church for a while now, but after going through all the churches in my lifetime, this is the only one I felt like it could become a membership for me or a whole entire, I could join the membership. And I took that leap, I signed the book, I've never done that before. And this is definitely a place where I belong because I feel secure, I feel understood. I, I feel like everyone here, when I, when I first came here, I was in a really big hole and I didn't want to look at anyone, I didn't want to talk to anyone but I wanted to be somewhere around people. And if you come here, your first day here, you will not enter the building or leave the building without 
almost everyone trying to get to know you. Everyone's curious about you when you come in if they haven't seen you before. What's your name? You're not wearing a name tag. And now, now I've got one. Uh, so here is the, I feel the most like supported and so much security here. And really what it does for mental health is amazing because every time I come here, when I leave, I come here grumpy, which I don't mean to, it's not because of you guys. I come here grumpy or depressed and I leave and every time I say, oh my gosh, why did I feel that way? These people here are so wonderful. You know, if someone asked me if I was nervous to speak today, which obviously I'm shaking. <laughs> but I said, no, because everyone there is so wonderful. I know that they're not judging me. You know, this is like the planet fitness of churches. You know? <laughs> we, are, we don't judge here. <laughs> But that is my sense, of, that's how I feel about belonging. It really, if, if any church, I feel like this one, because everyone here is growing. We're not focused on one specific higher being. It's more of just community and being together. And it has definitely pulled me out of that hole. But thank you very much. <laughs> Well, you all will learn not to get me around a microphone. <laughs> they, uh, they told me to keep it under two hours, so get, com <laughs> get comfortable. <laughs> my name is Lee Burdorf, and if you don't know my history, I was uh, in charge of the most liberal radio station in the state for, for about 20 years and uh, retired about... <laughs> I retired about seven years ago, and uh, I'm glad somebody still remembers uh, uh, what I contributed in, in that regard. But, uh, but uh, when I when I bought the house across the street, and I live in the house right directly across the street, uh, uh, 21 years ago I bought the house, and uh, I didn't pay much attention to this place because I'm anti-religion and have been for a long time, and uh, so I kind of ignored you. And then after a while, I started seeing that there were some interesting things going on over here. And it got me curious about what was happening over here. And, uh, and I, uh, I, I started making friends with uh, some of you. Some of you I knew already. Uh, Janelle and Phil, I knew, and uh, the, the Claiborne's, who are terrific people, and, uh, and uh, Dwight and uh, Oksana and, and, uh, and several of others of you that, that I've, I've known for some time. But, but it took me a while to uh, to come around. I decided after 21 years I might join and uh, and got with you. Uh, I'm going to be 78 years old next month. And uh, and uh, when you reach that age, a lot of you are around that age too, you know the mortality rate kind of goes down. I counted the other day I've had 12 close friends die in the last two years. And uh, at least six of them in Elkhart. And, uh, which left me without a lot of close friends in the area and and uh, and uh, also like-minded people. It's hard to find people that are like-minded to you in Elkhart. And uh, luckily I have uh, a whole group of them across the street from me. So, <laughs> so I, the, the person probably most responsible for me uh, joining is uh, Reverend Amy. Uh, she and I had many conversations in the last few years. Uh, uh, I used to look over here during the pandemic, and uh, she was ministering to a congregation that uh, uh, was invisible. And a lot of days she'd be sitting over here in her car waiting for people to drive up and so she could talk to them. And, uh, and I came over and we got to be pretty good friends. I had uh, several long conversations with Amy, and she convinced me that this might be the best thing for me. Uh, to get to know all of you and and uh, become part of this uh, congregation and and I've been kind of serving as a night watchman too. I keep an eye on the church and Zachary and I watch it very closely all the time and <laughs> try to make sure things are going right. Uh, I don't know where he is today. He's off chasing mice or something. But uh, but uh, thank you for being my friend and uh, I hope I'm a good addition to the congregation here in the in the next few years thanks
We're going to take a moment for congregational reflections here and comments and maybe even a question or two. Put, put our, our new members on the spot. Oh, no, I didn't say that. <laughs> Ken, do you want to take the microphone around? Hello. Anyone? Uh, Janiel first. Um, I feel like it's been necessary to have several. Can't hear me? Can you? No? Oh, okay. I'll, I'll get right here. Tastes about like that paper apple Phil was eating. Uh, since the pandemic, we've needed to have several in gatherings. We were away from each other for so long, and there were changes while we were gone. We needed to come together and come together and get to know how and who we were and come together again. And I guess that's kind of what I do every Sunday. Always happy to belong here. Um, I was fortunate to have a friend tell me, this was um, in the 70s, that this was a church I might want to consider. Um, I wanted to provide a religious education for my daughter, but I was fearful of going to a extremely conservative church that would make her feel like she was a sinner, was going to burn in hell for every sin she ever did. And, and I just wasn't comfortable with that. And, you know, I walked in here one Sunday and just never left. It's been just a joy all this, all these years. It's just been wonderful. And, and it was a great place for my daughter to be involved with too. And, and we had a fairly strong RE program at that time. And it was just, it was just perfect. And I just cherish this church and, and the welcoming it provides to those of us who are not as conservative as this community is. Thank you. So this guy's walking along and he falls into a hole and a minister, a minister walks by and he yells up and says, hey, can you help me out? He goes, I'll say a prayer for you, and, and walked on. A Catholic priest came by and said, yeah, I'll, I'll cross you, and then I'll say a prayer for you, and walked on. A Unitarian minister comes by, and he jumps down on the hole with him after he had a, heard the plea. And he goes, what What did you jump down here for? I'm, I'm stuck. How, how are we going to get out? He goes, oh, I've been here before. I know the way out. Some of you know that uh, back in the 60s, I used to attend this fellowship and that I moved to California for almost 40 years. But back in uh, 2011, I started to come back as a snowbird. And I would come back here for five to six months a while and visit my mother who was in the nursing home. And along about 2017, I decided, you know, these are, this was a factor, it wasn't the only factor. But I thought, these are good people to grow old with. <laughs> and so that was a that, thanks. Well, it's not bad for me. I mean, I love growing old. It's fine. <laughs> but I'm just saying this was, this was a strong pull to come back here. And uh, I've certainly not regretted it. Hi, for those who don't already know, um, I came, I joined the church back in the early 70s, and I'm really happy today that my two oldest children who grew up in the church and through the, the LRY are here today, again, come full circle. And uh, on my left and on my right, my oldest son and daughter, who had quite a time here, <laughs> back with Forrest Whitman way in the beginning. Yeah, I started coming in the late 70s, and 
I was, I walked in here and I was home. Uh, but I also took, helped lead and helped others through the New You program, which that was a four series program. And I was quick to tell others that my experience is not necessarily one that's shared by everyone, that I encouraged people to come try us. And if they didn't, didn't connect particularly with things that Sunday, to try us again, because we have so much variety Sunday to Sunday in our services and in the topics of the services that if one doesn't strike you, perhaps another one will. So I was always quick to tell people, you know, keep trying us. In other words, you're evolving and we're evolving and at some point in time we might intersect, you know. Um, there was a commercial on TV at the time for contact cold remedy. It was a capsule that was clear and and it was full of little colored confetti kind of balls inside the capsule. And part of the commercial is the capsule opens and the confetti is just kind of spraying out. And of course the capsules become the UU and the confetti. And it just struck me that that's how I, I kind of felt very, very much like a celebration when I found this place. And it, and that commercial with the UU and the, and the confetti coming out just to me was a visualization of how I was feeling having found this place. I'm going to share the last word here if I can get where the speakers won't distort, but this is from Rebecca Fazette online and on zoom and Rebecca says I signed the book many years ago as a teen going through the RE program. I felt so at home in this church. I was part of the committee as a teen. I didn't know it at the time because like many teens, I left home and got some real life experiences. I am so happy that even after all these years, I still get the same sense of belonging in this church, even though I have to work every Sunday and haven't made it to a service in person. Well, we're glad to have you, Rebecca. Okay, the, the hymn is Gather the Spirit. Hymn number 347.
Before I share the closing words, I wanted to point out something that we forgot to point out at the beginning of the service. And that is on your chairs, you should have found membership rights and responsibilities. And that's something for all of us to consider whether we are a member or thinking about becoming a member. And at that point, I would like to offer our membership book for anyone to sign that may feel so moved to do so. Uh, if you want to do it now or later, I have the membership book up here at the front. since 1961, I believe. Okay. Our closing words are from Starhawk. We are all longing to go home to some place, some place we have never been, a place half remembered and half envisioned. We can only catch glimpses of from time to time. Community. Somewhere there are people to whom we can speak with passion without having the words catch in our throats. Somewhere a circle of hands will open to receive us. Eyes will light up as we enter. Voices will celebrate with us whenever we come into our own power. Community means strength that joins our strength to do the work that needs to be done arms to hold us when we falter, a circle of healing, a circle of friends, some place where we can be free. Mm -hmm.